Hey Movers! Today we're going to be going over settings, specifically the general portion of settings. So let's start by clicking on the gear icon in the lower left hand side. From here, we're going to start in company. So as you would assume, this is just general company information. So you'll see your company name, your company address, website URL, and permit number. Company name, you can change it at any time. It was usually assigned to you when you signed up with us, but you can come in here and edit it. Um, anything that you change is automatically saved and is immediately visible to customers, so keep that in mind. The company address can also be changed at any time. We recommend using the address where your vehicles are located. Um, this address is not visible to customers, um, so if your vehicles are stored at a private or home address, um, rest assured, your privacy is protected, customers will not see this address, but we still recommend using the address where your vehicles are stored because that's how Moves will use to calculate any type of deadhead rates when it calculates pricing. Um, website URL, if you have one, you can enter it here. If not, you can enter it, uh, leave it blank. It's not going to affect the way Moves operates at all. Same with permit number. Um, some cities and states require you to have a permit number or a license number in order to operate a transportation or chauffeur company. If you live in one of those, you can enter the number here. If you don't, you can leave it blank. Uh, leaving it blank is not going to affect how Moves works for you. It's mostly there just for record keeping and this number is not visible to uh, customers. Uh, the next thing is additional details. So the most important part of this section is the general email and the voice phone number. The general email is important because any automated messages, the main one being whenever a customer books a ride with you, you'll receive a notification via email. Those notifications go to this general email. So you wanna make sure that the email that you regularly check or that you use for your business is entered here. Um, and same goes for the voice phone number. This is the number that you want your customers to have access to. So this is the number that will appear um, at the bottom of re reservation confirmations so that um, customers can easily contact you if they, they, they have any questions or concerns. Um, everything else can be left blank. However, um, you do have some additional options such as a booking email. So if you um, want emails that are related to bookings to go somewhere else, you know, maybe you want to keep your inbox a little clean, you can enter that here. Um, and same thing goes for a uh, text phone number. Let's say you want customers to text a different number than the voice phone number. Um, you can also enter that here. Um, however, if the voice and the text number are the same, you can just enter the voice phone number and everything will work flawlessly. And uh, last, you do have some profile customizations available to you, mainly being your logo. So once you have your logo, you can simply hit Add Company Logo and upload it. Um, the dimensions can be a little weird, so if you need some assistance getting, the, uh, getting your logo to fit just right, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we can help you out with that. Um, yeah, let's move over to Booking Tool. So included in all of our packages is access to a booking tool. This booking tool is great because it basically lets you outsource the booking process. So um, you can definitely limit the amount of time you spend on the phone or on text messages or email inputting reservations. Um, you can actually just send this link to customers via text, uh, via email, integrate it to your Moves website or integrate it into an existing website you may already have live and uh, it makes the booking process incredibly easy. If you want to know what your booking widget looks like, simply click on this little icon right here, and it's going to open up your booking tool in a new page. And this is what that process looks like. We made the form easy to understand, easy to follow. We wanted to make it um, as easy as possible for customers to book reservations with you. They simply come in here, select what type, hourly or one way, uh, select the date and time that they want to book a reservation with you. Enter the address that they'd like to um, be picked up from. The drop-off address. Any additional details. And they select an order type. 
they hit next and then they're prompted to select a vehicle from your um, available fleet inventory. So they can kind of go through and they can also get a breakdown of any pricing. And then they can easily just hit select this vehicle. And then here at the end, they'll be asked to, you know, provide some information. So And then for security reasons, sometimes a um, customer may be asked to, you know, prove that they are who they say they are. And from there, they'll just have to confirm the reservation one last time. And voila, a customer has booked a reservation. Super easy, super simple. Um, now let's go back to the booking widget settings. So in addition to that, there's also some settings that you can toggle on and off depending on your business needs. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, but let's go over some of them. Um, here, enable credit card reservation. So if this is enabled, what this will do is it will require customers to provide a credit card in order to confirm the reservation. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the customer has to pay with that credit card but they do have to provide one in order to complete the reservation. Um, that's great because having the credit card on file means that you can charge the customer at any time, um, you know, a few days before the reservation, the day of the reservation, um, while the reservation's um, in progress or at the end of the reservation. It just makes things a lot easier. And that information is securely stored on our servers um, or on our processor servers. Um, the next thing is the next setting you can enable is a gratuity selection for customers. So if you have this enabled, what it will do is it's going to give customers um, four options in terms of gratuity. So they're going to be able to select from 15, 18, 20%, and a custom field with 18% as the default. So those are the options that will appear to them. Um, and the last one here, if you have it enabled, it will require customers to uh, agree to your terms and conditions in order to book the reservation. Um, and then the last setting that we have is a base rate automation cutoff period. And what this will do is it will kind of give you a buffer um, in terms of preventing last minute bookings. So in this example here, I have my cutoff period set to one day. So if a customer was to try and use my booking widget um, and book a reservation within 24 hours, Instead of giving them a confirmation or letting them know that the reservation has been created, it's going to push the customer to contact um, me or the operator directly to ensure that the operator can fulfill that ride. That way you're not left scrambling trying to find a driver or, you know, squeeze an additional ride into your schedule. Um, yeah, and then lastly, you can also add an image to your booking widget just for a little bit of personalization. Um, now, let's go to communication. Um, in communication, um, you're given some options um, or some toggles for some notifications that you can turn off and on. Um, again, we have little descriptions there to try and make them as clear as possible, but let's go over a few. Uh, the first ones you'll see is uh, send automated charge emails to the booking contact. Basically what this means is whenever you charge the customer, the customer will be notified via email that the credit card on file has been charged. And then they'll also be given a link where they can view the price summary and the price breakdown, similar to a receipt. This one here, if you have it enabled, um, will send cancellation emails to the booking contact. It just, um, you know, like an email confirmation, letting the customer know that their reservation has been canceled. Um, the next ones um, are is a little bit of chat functionality. So included in all of our packages, it is a complimentary internet phone number that's used to send automated text messages to customers. And you do have some, you do have some control over which notifications are sent to those customers. And here is um, a list of those notifications and you can toggle them on and off. Um, this one here relates to the customer. So it will send the customer a reminder text letting them know they have a ride coming up. Uh, and these three down here are very important and we recommend always leaving these on 
But basically what they'll do is they'll send text messages to the drivers, uh, reminding them that they have a trip coming up. Um, they'll receive two text messages, one 24 hours and one an hour before the ride. And then these last two here um, will send text messages to drivers whenever they're assigned to a ride. And it will also send a notification to them um, repeatedly until they either acknowledge that they've been assigned to that ride or they decline the ride that they were assigned to. And then this one here will send them text messages asking them to update the ride statuses. So uh, the ride status is being, um, are you in route? Is the customer on board? Um, was the ride completed, etc. And these last ones here are just some additional notification settings, but these are for you internal. Um, so if a customer replies to one of these automated text messages, you'll receive an email notification letting you know that a customer replied and then you can log into Moves and reply back to them. Um, but yeah, those are the communication settings. Um, let's switch over to payments. So here is where you can set up your merchant processor with Moves. Um, instead of this blue connected button, you'll see a link. If you click on that link, it will take you through the setup process. If you run into any issues with that setup process, um, at any stage of the process, you can reach out to one of us directly and we will help you manually set that up. Usually it just takes a few minutes. Um, but yeah, let's move on to preferences. So here on preferences, we give you um, a few more customization um, options. The first one is a pricing layout. So what this will do is it will allow you to set certain uh, price categories that will apply to all reservations, whether they're created through the booking widget by a customer or whether they're created by you um, in moves. You know, maybe you're taking it over the phone or via email or text. Um, you'll see here on my profile, I've set up a price layout for gratuity, tax, and then other. So what I've done is I've set my gratuity at 20%. So what this will do is it will ensure that um, I will always receive at least a 20% gratuity from the customer. This is locked in and cannot be changed by the customer. So whenever they book a reservation with me, they're gonna clearly see that gratuity is already included in the price that they're being quoted. Um, you know, just to offer a little bit of extra transparency to the customer. Um, I've also set up a field for taxes. So depending on your city and state, you may be required to collect taxes for your services. Um, here, I've set it up for the taxes in my local city, which is 10.25%. So you'll see that there. It applies to every reservation that's created and cannot be edited by the customer as well. Um, and then uh, I also created this other category. So we have three other categories that are fully customizable. So you can call them whatever you'd like. Um, I use one of those three to initiate a booking fee. And then I set it to 5%. And the booking fee just helps offset um, processing fees associated with handling credit card payments. Um, and you can also add um, some other options if you need to. Just keep in mind though, when you add these in, that they apply to all reservations. It's, it's um, you know, blanket coverage. So, you know, maybe you're running a discount, um, you know, for the holidays. You, you can come in here and set a specific amount. Maybe you're doing like 10% off for holidays. This is gonna apply to all reservations that are created. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, over here, we have a toggle switch, which will, if turned on, will enable the amount due in the driver app. So basically what this does is if you have it enabled, your drivers will be able to see the full amount that customers are paying. Um, if that's how you run your business, feel free to turn it on. If you rather your drivers not know what the customers are paying and you rather just keep them knowing, you know, the flat rate that you pay them out or their hourly rate, rate um, I recommend leaving it off. Uh, and then lastly, we give you some control over the order types that um, you'd like to offer. Um, you can easily just, you know, click toggle these on and off. And you can come in here and decide, you know, what type of orders do I want to offer my customers? Uh, maybe you don't want to offer kids birthdays, so you can turn that off. Um, 
maybe you don't want to do golf events for whatever reason, you can toggle that off. So we do give you a lot of customization options. And um, that's a quick overview of general and settings. Um, I hope you enjoyed the short video and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. See you around, movers.